Wait, wait, wait. This is the best part. Oh my goodness. Cloud City. You think I could build that? What? There's no way. It's literally from Star Wars. It would be impossible. Yeah, I'm going to build that. Now, you may be asking yourself, Spaceship, how are you possibly going to make a floating city on Venus when the largest structural part in Space Flight Simulator is only eight meters long? And to that I say, mods. Using the very popular blueprint editing mod, we can extend parts to be way longer than they should be. Like, it's kind of scary how big you can make some of these parts. Okay, three, two, one. What's even better about using this mod is that it doesn't change the mass of the object. I can make this structural part as long as I want and you can see the mass never changes. This is going to be extremely helpful. To make our Venus colony as hospitable for our future residents as possible, we need the colony to be the correct elevation above the clouds. According to Wikipedia, a real life Venus colony would have to be about 50 kilometers above the surface for the pressure to be the same as Earth's pressure. But this is in real life. In Space Flight Simulator, the planets are a lot smaller than their real life counterparts, so theoretically, our colony shouldn't have to be as high as it would have to be in real life. Using data from the Space Flight Simulator wiki and doing some intense math calculations. Hmm. Ah, oh, that makes sense. I figured out that my colony needs to be about two kilometers high in order to be habitable by the Space Flight Simulator humans, which don't exist yet. Where's the astronaut update Space Flight Simulator? So with this newfound knowledge, I started building. At first, I thought it would be easiest to just do the entire thing in one launch. So I took some structural parts and stretched them out to be extremely long and then use cheats like infinite fuel and no collision damage to send it to Venus. And while I did manage to land it on Venus, it was very, very wobbly. And I don't think it would be possible to send something this big from Earth to Venus without using any cheats. So I used my big brain and decided it would be best to do multiple launches. The only cheats I'm allowing myself to use for this build are infinite build space and part clipping because without these two, it would be way harder. And I don't want to put myself through that. To help with the wobbliness, wobbliness, is that a word? Wobbliness. Ah, would you look at that? To help with the wobbliness of the structure, I used even bigger structural parts. And after stretching them out, they look like giant metal spaghetti noodles. To increase the stability even further, I added some diagonal supports on the sides to kind of give it more points of contact on the surface of Venus. To make sure my spaghetti looking skyscraper could survive entry into Venus's fiery hell of an atmosphere, I added another extra long beam to the bottom and covered it completely in heat shields. This would hopefully stop it from burning up. I also added parachutes to the side because Venus's atmosphere is so thick, parachutes work extremely well. My plan was to use very little fuel, if any, after we entered Venus's atmosphere. I made this structure about 500 meters tall, so I would need to launch four of them and stack them on top of each other to get to our correct height of 2000 meters. So I added docking ports to the top and the bottom so I could just launch the same thing four times and connect them all together. Before I sent it to Venus though, I did a couple quick tests. I wanted to test the heat shield and the parachutes, so I just did a quick launch and then re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, and... Oh, what happened? Oh no. After many attempts of me burning up, I realized I had made a fatal mistake in the design. This little piece right here. This small section of the structure wasn't protected by the heat shields and it was heating up so much to basically destroy the entire bottom section and everything just kind of burned up and fell apart. That's it? I thought that would fix all of the problems, but later during that very same test flight, these parachutes don't do anything. Oh no. You see, in Space Flight Simulator, parachutes have three different states they can be in. Undeployed, this is how they are before they open. Partially deployed, this is when they first open, and it'll slow you down a little bit, but you need the parachute to be in its third state, fully deployed, to actually slow you down enough. And unfortunately, you can't just adjust the parachute deploy height. The game does it automatically. And my rocket was so tall that the parachutes never got close enough to the ground to fully open. And there was no way I could land this giant structure onto Venus without parachutes. After looking online to see if there was some kind of mod that would let me change the parachute deploy height, I stumbled across this Reddit post, which told me all I had to do was change a value in the planet settings and that would fix it. Come on, come on, fully deploy, fully deploy, please. Yes, yes, it worked. It worked. Now the only thing I had to do was to get four of these to the surface of Venus.
Let's see what I can do. Now, to get this giant structure to Venus, I needed some serious firepower. So I built two full-size and fully staged rockets and attached them to the sides of it. Then I realized once the rocket staged and dropped its engines, the engines would fall and hit the bottom of my structure. So I needed them to be very far away in order to prevent this. I went through a few variations and test flights before I settled with the final design. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the extremely large Cloud City construction rocket it must not be that large though, because I still have to launch four of them. With my structure ready, I can begin the mission. This was the first time I tried to send the rocket to Venus without cheats, so I still had no idea if it would even make it. So I just decided to go for it. It took off from the launch pad okay, and I was feeling confident in my design. When it came time to stage the rocket, I had to make sure the side boosters wouldn't hit me as I flew through them. I used the first two stages of the rocket just to get myself into outer space. It's a pretty heavy rocket. Getting into Earth's orbit was a little tricky, but after using the remainder of the second stage and just burning for a long time, we made it to orbit. This was proof that my design was space worthy after all. The next step was just to hop planets. I had to wait until Earth and Venus were in a transfer window. This is when the planets are positioned in a way where it's very easy to go from one to another. It took over a year of in-game time for them to be lined up. The colony is gonna take a while to be built. Once we have a transfer window, we just have to accelerate in the right direction and we will be lined up to encounter Venus. Now we just have to wait. After traveling through space for a couple of months, our rocket finally made it to Venus. I did a precise burn to slow ourselves down and to get in orbit of Venus. Now for the hard part landing it. This first launch should be the easiest because I don't have to line it up and dock with anything. I should just be able to go straight down and land on the surface of Venus. So I picked a spot I thought would be good and I started my descent. I had plenty of fuel left and with the heat shield and parachutes, I shouldn't need that much fuel anyway. So everything looked like it was going perfect until... Oh no, no! I had planned for these side boosters to burn off because there were no heat shields under them, but I did not plan for the parachutes on the left side to burn off too. Hopefully I still had enough to slow me down. Once I was no longer burning, I went to detach the heat shields. It broke off the bottom docking ports. No. Luckily this one is the base of the structure, so I shouldn't need them. So I continued the descent. That was the easy one. I realized while descending on the first launch that I didn't have a lot of control of where the structure was going. So I added a middle fuel tank with RCS so I can more easily dock on top of my existing structure. Now I just had to do that all again. Easy, right? The launch went smoothly, pretty much the same as the first one. I got into orbit, waited another year to be in a transfer window, and then accelerated to Venus. The trouble came on the entry into Venus's atmosphere. It was incredibly hard to line up my rocket with the one already on the surface. Luckily, I saved the game right before entry so I could keep trying over and over. It took over 10 attempts, but I had it lined up almost perfectly. All I had to do was to go straight down and land on the structure. No, no. Nice. Okay, okay, it's fine. Actually, this is better because I can just use the tipped over rocket as a base and it'll be even more stable than just being on the ground. I'll just have to launch an extra rocket to get to the right height. I still got this. I realized the RCS helped on the descent, but it wasn't enough to lift the rocket at all. So if I missed the dock, I would have no way to recover. So I added an engine so I can move in any direction. This greatly improved the rocket's maneuverability. <laughs> The third launch went smoothly, I got to orbit, waited a year, and then burned to Venus. On entry into Venus's atmosphere, I didn't line it up super well, but because I had an engine now, I figured I could just burn the engine to line it up. So that's what I did. No, not sticky keys. When I got near the structure, I realized the base had somehow disappeared. I think the probe on the base got destroyed, so the game thought it was just space junk and despawned it. So I no longer had that stable base and was back to the slanted one. The only problem was I used all of the fuel to line it up, so when I was ready to go for the dock, I didn't have any fuel left. No way I get this. I still managed to get it to get on top of it, but they weren't fully docked, but I figured they interlocked in a way that it would be fine to stack two more on top. So I just let it be, only two more to go. I didn't make any changes to the rocket this time as I was confident in the design. I launched, made it to orbit, waited a year, and then burned to Venus again. I really made sure I was lined up this time so I could use as much fuel as I needed to line up the dock perfectly.
I got the dot. Yes. I was really worried the whole thing was gonna tip over because it was so slanted, so I let it sit for a minute to see what would happen. I used the engines to adjust it a tiny bit and it looked pretty stable. Now I just needed the final piece. This was it. All I had to do was dock one more on top and the colony would be ready. Once the structure finally loaded in, I realized there was a problem. No, it went through it. The two structures that weren't docked together had sort of merged together and made the entire structure fall down. Ugh. Oh, Come on. There we go. Okay, I think this glitch part here is actually gonna be a good support. So I think I should be able to stack a fourth one up here. Okay, okay. One more launch. This time, it was for real. After a perfect launch and transfer, I was ready. I lined it up nearly perfectly on the entry into Venus's atmosphere. The only issue was the structure was so tall now that even after changing the value in the settings for the parachutes, it was still too high up for the parachutes to open fully. I had to get this first try. Come on. Oh. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it was done. Now the final step was as simple as shrinking my rocket down and building a little colony on it. I used part clipping to make the buildings look like they had windows and added various doors and stuff to kind of have a little city here. Then I just did one more launch. Here we go. Come on, talk. Oh, we're out of fuel, but I'll count that. <laughs> There we go, the colony's done. Ah, uh, this is so nice. Look at that nice, disgusting yellow sky. Uh, I think we might be moving. Shh, I'm enjoying the view. Yeah, we're definitely falling over. Uh-oh. Yay. 